Happy Friday, fifth grade. We are going to get started with a quick write. Describe a time when you were really sick. How did you feel? What did you do to get better? Silently write down your answer. You can press pause and then press play when you're ready for the focus, question, and vocabulary. What do Brian's actions and inner dialogue reveal about his character? Our vocabulary words today are abate. That's when something bad is happening and it becomes less bad or less intense. It's this picture right here. The man is saying he can't go home until his wife's temper has abated or until she's not as mad at him anymore. The second one is remnants, and that's um, a small remaining piece of something. So here are some plates that have been eaten on, and on the plates are the remnants of the dinner or uh, small bits of food. The third one is naturalist, and that's someone who's an expert in studying nature. TJ actually used to be a naturalist before we moved to D.C., so he's an expert in nature. All right, we're going to read Chapter 4 using our CSPS strategy, which we're all experts in right now. Open up your book. I believe it's on page 29, and we are going to read the first two sections. The memory was like a knife cutting into him, slicing deep into him with hate. The secret. He'd been riding his 10-speed with a friend named Terry. They had been taking a run on a bike trail and decided to come back a different way, a way that took them past the Amber Mall. Brian remembered everything in incredible detail. Remember the time on the bank clock in the mall flashing 331, then the temperature 82, and the date. All the numbers were part of the memory. All of his life was part of the memory. I'm going to pause right here. Um, the author is using a literary technique or device called flashback. And so we know at the end of chapter 3, Brian has passed out once he reaches land after he crashed his plane into the water. And so during the time where he's passed out or fallen asleep, um, he's remembering um, how he found something he found out about the secret, something his dad doesn't know. And so the author's giving us details about the secret through Brian's memories. All right, um, and so when we are thinking about describing Brian and what's he doing, we could say um, while Brian is passed out on land, he remembers the secret about his mom. Press pause to write down your answer, and I want you to choose a quote on um, the first two paragraphs. I would probably choose um, these first two sentences. I would, and I will probably include the secret because that gives me more details about what it's about. Press pause to write down your quote and play when you're ready for the setting. Let's keep going. Terry had just turned to smile at him about something and Brian looked over Terry's head and saw her. His mother, she was sitting in a station wagon, a strange wagon. That's a type of car, it's not an actual wagon. He saw her and she did not see him. Brian was going to wave or call out, but something stopped him. There was a man in the car, short, blonde hair, the man had, wearing some kind of white pullover tennis shirt. Brian saw this and more, saw the secret and saw more later, but the memory came in pieces, came in scenes like this. Terry smiling, Brian looking over his head to see the station wagon, and his mother sitting with the man, the time and temperature clock, the front wheel of his bike, the short blonde hair of the man, the white shirt of the man, the hot, hate slices of memory were exact. The secret. 
And so we can add to box number one because we um, we learned what the secret was about. And if we're adding to box one, we could say um, Brian saw his mom with another man. Brian saw his mom with another man. And we can infer that she's probably having an affair, and that is the reason why she wanted to divorce his dad. All right, go to the next section. When you see these three dots, it means, like, the flashback is over, or the author's changing the setting, or the author, um, it's a quick way for the author to communicate that he's going to change something, or that, you know, time has passed. All right, so in the next section, it says, Brian opened his eyes and screamed. For seconds, he did not know where he was, only that the crash was still happening and he was going to die, and he screamed until his breath was gone. Then silence, filled with sobs as he pulled in air, half crying. How could it be so quiet? Moments ago, there was nothing but noise, crashing and tearing, screaming. Now quiet. Some birds were singing. How could birds be singing? His legs felt wet, and he raised up his hands and looked back down at them. They were in the lake. Strange. They went down into the water. He tried to move, but pain hammered into him and made his breath shorten into gasps, and he stops. Stopped, his legs still in the water. Pain. Memory. He turned again. And sun came across the water, wait, sun, cutting into his eyes and making him turn away. It was over then, the crash. He was alive. The crash is over and I'm alive, he thought. Then his eyes closed and he lowered his head for minutes. That seemed longer. When he opened them again, it was evening, and some of the sharp pain had abated. There were many dull aches and the crash came back to him fully. We'll stop right there because we have our setting. We know that Brian um, is somewhere in the Canadian wilderness, and he's, he is currently, um, half of his body is in the water, and the other half of his body is out of the water. All right, press pause to write down your answer. And 2A. And we will find a quote. Let's see. Here's one about how some birds are singing and he felt like his legs were wet and they were in the lake. Press pause to write down your quote and play when you're ready to keep reading to talk about the problem. All right, so this is the part where Brian is remembering the crash. Into the trees and out onto the lake, the plane had crashed and sunk in the lake, and he had somehow pulled free. He raised himself and crawled out of the water, grunting with pain of movement. His legs were on fire, and his forehead felt as if somebody had been pounding on it with a hammer. But he could move. He pulled his legs out of the lake and crawled on his hands and knees until he was away from the wet, soft shore and near a small stand of brush of some kind. Then he went down, only this time to rest, to say something of himself. He lay on his side and put his head on his arm and closed his eyes because that was all he could do now. All he could think was being able to do. He closed his eyes and slept, dreamless, deep, and down. So when we think about our problem, um, Brian has been injured in the crash and he is in a lot of pain. Press pause to write down your problem and play when you're ready for the quote. And we have a quote that says, he raised himself and crawled out of the water, grunting with pain of movement. And you can even add his legs were on fire and his forehead felt as if somebody had been pounding on it with a hammer. Press pause to write down the quote and play when you're ready for the solution. And it says, you know, after Brian crawled out of the water and onto the dry land, um, he closed his eyes and went to sleep, hoping that the rest would make him better. 
So Brian got on to dry land and went to sleep, hoping that he would feel better when he woke up. Press pause to write that down in 4A, and for 4B, you can write down this quote about him sleeping. When you're finished, you can write your paragraph, How Does Brian Respond to Challenge? What do Brian's actions reveal about his character? So you want to think about um, Brian's problem, and then talk about how he tried to solve the problem, and what this reveals about him as a person.